Right, hello, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm here at the Asian Games um, venue, uh, the Asian 2020 Games venue, and uh, I'm here with CRI and they brought us to look at this, but on the tour also, I've met this really nice young man here. He's a fellow British guy, and uh, he's, he's been in China just a couple of years now. As you're probably aware, I've been coming to China from since 2007 and I've spent probably nine years here and in the last sort of um, three and a half years I live permanently here and I always find it interesting to to speak to younger people who've come to live in China because as you know Ollie my son lives here and his sort of thinking was drastically changed um, from before he was here to when he came to live here and I just really like to uh, to ask Luke the same question. So you've been here two years now, right? Yeah, two okay. years nearly. Yeah. And what what brought you here in the first place? To t t tell my audience a little bit about why you're here. Um. Well, I've always been fascinated um, by. Well, I, I don't know. I suppose actually, in the UK, it's a very small place in itself. It is tiny. There's not really you know too many things to do. If you've got. Uh, a bucket list of places there it suddenly diminishes it go it goes out and you, you do get bored things close really early i live in a tiny town right so my hometown i think like two thousand people uh -huh. and it's just inconvenient oh, i really? wanted to go out i wanted to go to other places uh -huh. so i don't know I, I i had a few options in my mind america australia china um i did think though china it was growing it was I think it'd be great for business. It's not raining so much now. We can have a walk outside. I think. Okay, so what what is it you do here? Why did you come here? Did you come here for your job? Oh, we better go back inside because it's raining. We'll we'll have a walk back that way. Uh -huh. So, did you come here for a job? Are you a student? What is it you're doing here? Yes, yeah, so the main thing is I'm here to study. So I'm a PhD student in Shanghai. So I'm at Shanghai Jiaotong University. So it's like the top three or top four in China. So. I'm provisionally here for four or five years, um, and then we'll see what's happening. Am I correct in saying that you, the Chinese government, are funding your education here? Is that correct? So I'm getting a scholarship, yeah, from the Shanghai government. So you've got a couple of options. You can have one from the actual Chinese government, the main one in Beijing, mm -hmm. or there's actually one in Shanghai. Um, and it, yeah, if you're an international student, you're coming uh, from abroad. It's, it's not too hard to get one actually. So, they're, they're so there's other UK students that could get their university education paid for in China by the Chinese, is that correct? Yes, that's right. So I, wow. I was thinking about doing my PhD in the UK. It was too expensive. It was hard to get a scholarship. China, they give actually quite a, a good amount of money. You get free accommodation, um, you get a monthly stipend. So it, it, it's it's so affordable, yeah. in the UK, you would have had to be paying like nine thousand pound a term just for a year for just for tuition. Yeah, and then you would have had to live on top, like living costs on top of that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's but, just not affordable. But here, literally, you're getting it all paid for: accommodation, tuition, everything. Yeah, all for wow. free. Yeah. So. Wow. Okay. And and what is it you're studying here? So I'm studying. So my background is actually mathematics but I wanted to go into AI because I think that's the future. And Shanghai is, um, I think it's got an abundance of AI companies. So that's why I wanted to come to China. Actually, that was one of the main reasons. Okay, and what, why do you think China is better for AI development? Well, um, in terms of research in itself, uh, China has got the most AI publications around the world. So that's ideal for me. But they have uh, so much data, right? They, that's the main thing, right? Your model can be really good, but if you've got no data, it's useless. It's useless. Uh -huh. So China, what they do is, you, they work together, they get all their data, and in, in Europe, there's something called GDPR, and you, it's very much protected. You can't get that data. So I feel with China, things are so advanced here compared to how it is in the West. Okay, and before you came here, you're obviously aware that um, Western press is pretty negative on China. What, what were your thoughts about China before you came here? Did you think people were oppressed and unhappy? Or were, kind of what I'm trying to say is, now you've arrived here and you've been here for two years, 
how is your thoughts different or are they different to what your thoughts were when you were back in the UK before you'd come here? Oh, honestly, totally different, totally different. I did come here with a negative perception. Um, I would watch BBC documentaries um, about you know Xinjiang and all of those things. I'd, I'd read articles saying churches were getting taken down, you can't do religion here. Um, so I was interested and I came here and it was just not what I thought it was at all. It was, it, I just can't believe that you know, the, some of the sheer lies. It, it really is yeah, astonishing. Yeah, it's, it's astounding, isn't it? And, and as a young person here, do you find you have a similar life to you would have as a young person in the UK? Or do you find there's, there's, there's more opportunities to do things here? Oh yeah, I mean Shanghai. Um, it's that's where you live, right? Yeah, so I'm yeah. living. Yeah, I'm living in Shanghai. My favourite city, by the way. Yeah, it's super convenient. Well, like I said before, so I'm, I'm in a really rural town in the UK. So it's just so inconvenient. I've not really lived in a, a big city. I've never lived in London. So um, coming here, it's kind of like a shock to the system. Um, it's super busy, um, but I, I love that. And there is a lot of opportunity, spe especially for work. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy here actually. And how do you think the living costs here for a student compare to back in the UK? Um, well Shanghai is one of the more expensive uh, places. Yeah, yeah, all the big cities are, are the more expensive but places. it's a lot cheaper I think in general compared to the UK. So uh, if you want to go get public transport, that's really cheap. Yeah, it's I, I remember cheap, going in it? London on the tube, the underground, maybe you're spending £8 for... Um, I don't know, a 15 minute journey or something. Uh -huh. It's crazy. Here, it's a tenth of that, if, if that. Mm -hmm. And they also have a really good high speed train network, so it's super easy to visit other cities, isn't it? Yeah, so I love traveling and yeah. I'm going all the way around. Um, you, know, China, you don't realize how big China is, so it's just so convenient to get to places. Mm -hmm. uh, and then oh, the UK's transport. Okay, I just have a, a couple more things I'd like to touch So The first one is, a lot of students in, in the UK and Europe and maybe the US will have a gap year. And often I, I see them when they travel, they always want to travel to places like Thailand, Malaysia and, and these kind of countries. And I very rarely hear uh, these students say they would like to travel to China. And Do you think that's a mistake they're making? I think so. Um, I, I think you, you want to go, if you're looking for somewhere to work in the future, especially m have a business, China, if you can go there, understand the culture, learn the language, it mm -hmm. would do wonders for you, for, for your career. I, I really do think so. Yeah. I think, how many people speak Mandarin, you know, around the world? Yeah. So, so many. Yeah. And China itself, there are so many things to see and do. You know what, my, when I was growing up, Mm -hmm. my perception of China because I was watching TV and you know um, in the news what I thought China was was a bunch of rice farms you know you see those yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. old ladies with the big rice hats uh -huh. so, and so I just thought it was like that so I was shocked so actually one of the reasons I wanted to come to China as well was I watched YouTube videos and I saw what it was like I saw ah. how modern it is that's kind of the reason why I wanted to make my own videos to also show people. Okay, I mean, yeah, I, I'm obviously a lot older than you and, and my perception I saw on TV when I was growing up, all the images I would see would be like people wearing grey clothes, riding bicycles in Beijing, holding little red books. And, you know, it's, it's, it's such a developed, from an a, a infrastructure point of view, country. I mean, the, the infrastructure here is, is world class, you know, the trains and and subway systems and it's super easy to get back and, and I think that gives you a level of, of freedom that you have mobility to travel fairly cheaply to places so let, let's just close this video up now what would you say to young people who have never considered maybe coming to visit China or coming to study here what, what would be like you know a few sentences of that, that you'd give them to, to maybe open their minds and consider coming to study or work or live here yeah give it a shot give it a chance um, my mind completely changed you don't always trust the mainstream media and what they do yeah say. I second that and I think you, your mind will open you come in here I think I'm a different person now I think um, you know you, you do you get those experiences out there and studying 
in China, you know, they've got some of the best universities in the world, actually. And mm -hmm. you're getting paid for it, you're getting a scholarship, it's really great. Yeah, Why wouldn't you? I, I, that's amazing. I wasn't aware that actually um, British students could get um, all their education here funded by, by the Chinese. That's pretty amazing. And just before we sign off, would you like to introduce your channel? And uh, we can see if we can get some people to go over there and uh, and give you a subscription. Ah, sure, thank you. Okay, so yeah, my name is Luke. My YouTube channel is Live in La Vida Luke, which is a little bit of a mouthful, but I, I thought it's simple. You just have to think of the Ricky Martin song, right? So, <laughs> upside, inside out. She's Live in La Vida, Vida Luca. Luke. Luke. <laughs> there we go. So go okay, check it out. Thank you. All right. So. Um, that does bring us to the end of this video. As you know, we have many styles of video on this channel. We have food and travel, we have technology, we have opinion pieces, and occasionally I interview other people who've come to live here. So if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel in general, hit that subscribe button. But as always, for now, take care. Bye-bye, see you.